Let's take a look at uh, G, GMDA1, worksheet number two. This is where we begin to do a quick uh, review over area and the development of formulas in area. This particular objective is focusing on uh, <coughs> the development of the concepts, uh, not so much the calculations, but there is some calculations for sure. Um, so we're going to look at the rectangle and the parallelogram. Area actually starts with the rectangle <coughs> because of its 90 degree uh, adjacent sides allows for squares to be formed. Um, let's talk about that for a second. So in perimeter we, we measure a one dimension uh, a length and so uh, if we're measuring in units, uh, centimeters, miles, whatever it is, it would be centimeters uh, because we're just saying how long something is. When we go to area, we're now doing a two-dimensional measurement. We're measuring how many squares are in the object. And so you know that we go to a second power, a second dimension. So uh, we are doing a region or a square. When we go to a volume, eventually, uh, we're looking at a third dimension. A cube is what we're looking at. So we're looking at... Uh, how many cubes fit into that object. So why the rectangle is our first formula is it's gridded out basically is that if you had you know three centimeters here and you had one two three four five six seven centimeters here that would mean that there are 21 cubes uh, in that and it would be 21 centimeters squared. In other words 21 squares. Um, so we find out that the area of a rectangle is just what we call base times height, uh, a base and a height. Base and heights are always perpendicular to each other. Sometimes this is called lengths and widths in this case. I like the more general formula here. Now to move um, to the development of, well let's go to this here, just an example of a composite shape. Um, is that um, there's kind of fun ways to work with these guys. Um, you can think of them as pieces or holes. Let me show you what I mean. So some uh, students will say, oh, I see this. This is a 3 by 3, so 9 here. And three min 5 minus 3 is 2, so 6 times 2 is 12. And so they get an area of 21 centimeters squared. Kind of cool. Now a different student looking at things in terms of the hole might say, oh, that's one big rectangle. So they look at it as one solid area of 6 times 5 for 30. And then they say, well, I'm going to subtract this little piece here, which would be a 3 by 3 piece. And so they would subtract 9, and they would also get the same answer. So you can think of it as pieces to make it up, or the whole minus a piece. Kind of an interesting thing. The development of the um, parallelogram uh, relationship or formula is how we can alter it to use a formula we know to get this one. And the obvious way, and I'll show you some more under the Elmo in a minute, but the obvious way is what's called dissection, which is to cut and move it. So if we took our guy here and we cut it like with our scissors right here, you know that because parallelograms have a uh, parallel sides and equidistances and so on uh, that it would fit right there and so this piece that we would lose we would gain back here so that base the original base from here to here would now still be the base from here to here because I put it right back but just in a different spot notice what's formed when we do that uh, we form a rectangle, a rectangle that has the same area as the parallelogram. We know how to calculate a rectangle's area, which would be base, which is the, still the original base length, and the original height. And so a parallelogram is base times height. Let's look at some stuff under the Elmo as well. So as mentioned, the most basic shape we can really look at is a rectangle. Um, first of all, labeling rectangles, there are a number of ways that get used, length and width, uh, height and base, base and height. 
Uh, and they are often kind of confusing because how do you know who the width is and who the length is? How do you know the base and the height? And really, base and height, um, in this case, because uh, they are perpendicular to each other, are really quite interchangeable. So this is the height and this is the base, but this could be your base and this could be your height. They, they get labeled based off of um, their relationship, of a perpendicular relationship. The difference between length and width, I think length is usually just the longer side, and width is always the more narrow, I, I, I guess. Um, the formula comes from a very basic premise um, of base times height. It's a rectangle because it's in its gridded form. Um, you can just think of it as, as a simple uh, multiplication. So you have, you know, two rows and six columns, so there are 12 of these squares that take place here. So a rectangle really comes from this idea of multiplying its two dimensions, the length and the width or the base and the height, to find out how many. So again, two rows, six columns, 12 of these items, very simple. And that doesn't matter if it's turned a little bit or anything like that. Again, because a rectangle is perpendicular, we can just turn this to make it look normal. And then we have uh, the 8 and the 4 for 32 of these squares and so on, and 1 times 5. So it's the most basic, and there's not much to explain, but it's the guy that really helps us uh, make sense of other, other shapes like the parallelogram. The parallelogram, of course, does not have perpendicular sides. Its area is not just simply C times D. But what's cool about it is that you and I have a pretty good intuition about its relationship to the rectangle. You can see what's happening here. If we take our parallelogram and we dissect it, this is a way to come up with area. We, we take this piece and kind of cut it away, and we translate it. It will automatically fit here. It'll fit there because we know opposite sides are parallel and equal and so on. And you can see that by doing this, we basically, by dissecting this piece and placing it in the new location, we form a rectangle. And this rectangle, amazingly enough, has the same height as the original parallelogram, and it has the same base as the original parallelogram, because the piece we cut off, we just put right back where it went. So we learn that even though it's a parallelogram, it is still just simply base times height. And with a little bit of moving things around, we can easily show that or demonstrate that to somebody. Another way to make sense of this is, some, is a process called shearing. And what shearing means is to lock in um, one value and then to uh, slide the other, the other value the dimension along. I'll show you what I mean. So we lock in this base and then we're going to shear or slide uh, the, uh, the opposite side along a parallel path. And the reason we slide parallel is because then it keeps the height the same, but just moves um, that along. And you can see it doesn't change our base. It doesn't change our height. It just changes um, the angles and the slopes and so on. So as we slide along, I could keep sliding that until I am exactly perpendicular. And there again, I made a parallelogram into the rectangle. And this rectangle has the same base and the same height as the original parallelogram that has the same base and the same height. So they have the same area. So again, another way to make sense of area is shearing. And we'll show you some more of that. Finally, let's just do a couple of calculations. Nothing tricky about this. Base and height. This is a very weird layout, but this is a side that's a base, and this is a height. And why can I call them base and height? Is because they're perpendicular to each other. So 8 times 10 is 80. That's easy. Uh, of course, we're now in two dimensions, and when you're in two dimensions, uh, we do squares. We're counting how many squares exist, not, how, uh, not the total length. Here we have a 45. Uh, that's kind of cool. And uh, this is a nice little review of a 45-45 triangle. If this is 5 root 2, then this would be 5, and this would be 5. So that gives us our height here. That does tell us that this is 5. This other piece would be 6 then. 
But in our case, it's still just 11 times 5 is 55 centimeters squared. Base is 11, height is 5. But I use this nice little 45-45 relationship. Here, uh, this is called a composite. These are fun. You can think of them in two different ways. Lots of students will draw this and go 12 times, let's see, 12 times 6. So that's 60, 72. And, uh, and then this would be, let's see, 8 minus 6. So this would be 2 times, let's see, that's 12 minus 6. So this would be 12 here. So we get 84 centimeters squared. Now, let's show you another fun trick. So this is seeing the pieces. Now I want to show you by doing it by the whole. So let's say we found the entire rectangular shape, which would be 12 times 8. And then we're going to subtract 6 by 2. We're going to subtract 12. So if we did that, that would be 96 minus 12, which is still our 84. So you can see it as the entire minus a piece. Or you can see it as two little pieces, however you want. Uh, here, they, um, they would have to tell us that the, uh, let's see, given the following rectangles, they would have to tell us that this is a rectangle to pull this off. Um, and so, uh, because it's a rectangle, uh, we are missing a, a base and a height. Um, but guess what? This is the Pythagorean theorem, 5 squared plus x squared equals 13 squared. And when we solve that, we would get 12 there. And so it's 5 times 12 is 60 centimeters. Finally, let's talk about uh, my friend uh, shearing. Ooh, this is fun stuff. Um, basically, uh, what shearing means is to organize the shape using the principle of shearing in a way that will be easy for us to calculate the area. I mean, you can try and add up all these little pieces in here, but that's a little tricky to do, maybe. So what I'm going to do is we're going to do a little bit of uh, shearing as a way to do this. I'm just trying to see what the easiest way is. Well, let's do this. I'm going to shear along here. So remember, you lock in one one side and then you slide the other one along. So I'm going to slide this one until I get it right to this spot. Okay, so it's going to slide down here and then to this spot. So now when I'm done, I have a new shape. And let me shade it in so you can see it. It would be here. Let's see if we can show it to you. So by shearing that side, uh, moving it along, I kept the base the same and the height the same by moving it parallel. And now I created a nice little parallelogram that I can easily calculate, which is uh, a height of 2. So the height is 2, and the base is 2 and a half. So, so base times height, so this is a 5 centimeter squared. Uh, relationship if this is a centimeter grid. Let's try uh, this one here. Let's think about this. Let's do the same thing. I'm going to shear this side here. So again, I create a, a parallel. And I always shear it until I create a, um, a nice uh, horizontal or vertical relationship. So I'm going to shear that all the way down here. And it will create uh, a new parallelogram. This one is easier for me to calculate, though. And so here it is. Notice the base stayed the same. The height stayed the same because I sheared in a parallel manner. But this has a base of 1, 2, 3, 4. And this has a height of 1. 4 times 1 is 4 centimeters squared. So shearing is to create a line and then to slide it along that parallel line to the other base. It maintains the area because the base and the height are unchanged. It just changes the way the shape looks. It's a cool process.